Good morning. Welcome to your early morning intuitive guidance. It is Saturday. It is Saturday. So let's take a breath just for Saturday. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Ooh, felt the shoulders drop. That was good. Good morning, Abigail. You're the first one on this morning. Welcome, welcome. Glad you are here. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Good morning, Janine. Welcome. You're the second one on today. That's fabulous. Let's keep breathing. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Thank you for the rainbow. Very pretty. Good morning, Diane. Welcome. Glad you are here. Glad you are here. I'm going to give it a minute for more to pop on because we've got some good shit to talk about today. And uh, I'm going to take a drink because I'm going to have a lot to say. Yes. Good morning, Glenn. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad everybody is here. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Cindy. Sending you all good energy. Sending you all good energy. And I sent myself some good energy just a few minutes ago, and I'm going to share that process with you today. And all these little pieces are coming in, and I'm just going to turn it over to spirit that whatever needs to come out of my mouth comes out of my mouth, because lots to say today. Got lots to say today. So, first thing that shows up is the book, The Timekeeper by Mitch Album. If you haven't read it, read it. I just finished it last night, and it was so helpful putting a perspective on stuff. If you don't know Mitch Album, he's the one who wrote Tuesdays with Maury, and he also wrote... Um, the Five People You Meet in Heaven, and both very captivating books. And this one is no different. But And he talks in the, the jacket cover, in, or in the acknowledgments, about the difficulties he had writing this book, because this is a deep dive into your soul kind of book. So I can tell that he, as the author, was mining his own depths, to write this book. So let me see where to begin now. I feel like I want to share my process this morning, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the book, and then I'm going to talk about where do we go from here. So you're my tribe. You're my peeps, right? I want to share with you where I'm at and the process to how I got here this morning, because I woke up this morning and I was just like, fuck this. Exhausted, um, crabby, um, yesterday was largely spent dealing with family and a funeral for a cousin of mine and watching people grieve and you're, I'm always reflective when someone passes and my perspective on death and dying is different than most people's. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think when it's time, I don't necessarily... Uh, I think when it's time, we're birthed into a new life. What that looks like, I don't know. That's one of the reasons I liked Mitch Albom's The Five People You Meet in Heaven, because he had that wild concept of your heaven is going to be what you need it to be. It doesn't all have to be angels and rainbows and clouds and oh and all that stuff that's one version what's your version so so my process this morning i woke up i was supposed to go drive two a little over two hours to meet my sister in outside of baraboo wisconsin which is a little town it's a circus town ringley brothers all kinds of stuff there but We've been walking chunks of the Ice Age Trail. So far, we've done one chunk. It was seven and a half miles. It was a chunk. <laughs> this one was going to be a four mile walk, including through downtown Baraboo. We thought we could hack that, yet yeah, this before snow flies. And yesterday was one of those days where things just weren't coming together. Things weren't working. I had anxiety. I have not had anxiety in years 
Why? Because I've done a ton of work. I have a ton of tools. I've seen enough life to go. I gave a speech in front of 200 hungry, crabby psychologists. I can do a bunch of shit. But yesterday it felt like I'm losing traction here. I'm not, I'm not hanging on real well here. I need to stop and I need to pay attention. Rather than running faster, rather than trying to do more, stop, pay attention. So there's five of you on here with me. Please let's all take a nice deep breath in and out. And again, I feel my shoulders drop. So death and dying, people struggling, grief, the world looking like it's going to hell in a handbasket. Good morning, Mel. Glad you're here. More extreme weather. Those poor cattle up to their waists in snow in New Mexico. On and on and on. My pumping up my tires. And before we even got back here, after like a 10-mile drive, the light already coming on. So... Woke up at four o'clock this morning, which is pretty typical, but I like to lay there for an hour and just breathe and contemplate and whatever. Well, this morning I'm going, what do I do? What do I do? How do I address all this shit? Every direction I turned seemed like that's not working. This isn't flying. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I know better than to push harder. That. That was my 20s and 30s, probably into my 40s. Good morning, Audrey. Glad you are here. Push, 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 push. Didn't always work. Didn't always work. Exhausted me. At what price? What price did I pay for all that pushing to try to make shit happen in Bonnie timing instead of divine right timing? Yes? So I thought, I need something. What is it I need? So I use muscle testing to help myself discern. So I muscle tested it and it wasn't that I needed to do um, just general psych K. That's one of my tools for shifting things. It wasn't that I needed to journal. It wasn't that I need all the things I usually do. That wasn't it. Okay, so then what the hell is it? So I'm looking around my desk for inspiration. And I see this first. Expansive consciousness dissolves obstacles. So I um, muscle tested, I believe. Expansive consciousness dissolves obstacles. It was weak. Do I worry about it being weak? No, not at all, because I have tools. So I did a new direction balance for, I believe, Expansive consciousness dissolves obstacles. So let me put you in the position for this. It, it, the new direction balance, there's many steps, but the physical change portion of that process is cross one ankle over the other. It's the whole brain posture. Arms out in front like a zombie. Cross at the wrist. Turn your palms down. You can either rest them in your lap or you can bring them up to your chest. So just sit like this for a bit while I'm talking. And this is designed to help things shift. So first I did expansive consciousness dissolves obstacles. After I did the whole brain posture for a bit, and then I locked it in, and then I muscle tested again. Now it's strong. I believe expansive consciousness dissolves obstacles. Have I balanced this in the past? Yes. Sometimes when there's trauma, we pop out of alignment. Just like if we have a car accident, our spines can get out of alignment. We gotta hit the chiropractor, right? Same thing happens psychically, emotionally, mentally. We've had some blows this past week. So things got knocked out of alignment. I believe expansive consciousness dissolves obstacles. So then I asked, um, let me th let me do let me do it for you so you can hear it. Oh, and I'm noticing it's a pink sky this morning. And I know, pink sky in the morning, sailors take warning. I think we're going to get a deluge, but whatever. It doesn't matter. The pink sky right now is beautiful, and I'm going to pay attention to that. 
So the second thing that came up, good morning, Catherine. Glad you are here. Welcome, welcome. And welcome to anybody I missed calling out by name as I'm sharing process with you here. And this is why I called it proceed. That's what I called today. Proceed. Watch me proceed through this process. Thank you for the sunrise. Beautiful, beautiful. Watch me proceed through where I'm going to arrive and know that I'm going to continue to proceed today. And I'm inviting you to proceed as well. So that was the first thing. So then I asked, um, there's another statement to balance to support this goal. Answer was no. There's another statement to balance to benefit me now. Yes. So I looked around my desk and the next thing that popped up was believe. My favorite word, the word I live by, the word that's probably on a dozen things on my desk. So I'm also tested. I believe. <clears throat> Alarm, we'll get rid of that. Um, and good, it didn't kick me off. Woo. So I believe, weak. Again, muscle tested, doing my process, what was needed. It was another whole brain posture. Good morning, Beth. Glad you're here. So again, get to the end of that. Get that strengthened. Ask. There's another statement to balance to support this goal. Nope. Another statement to balance to benefit me at the time. Yes. So I look around. Embrace the process. Release the outcome. And that required another new direction balance. Proceeded again. I wasn't done yet. Because one of the questions, if, if as I'm asking questions, if when I get to the point where I say there's another statement to balance to benefit me at this time, and the answer is no, I'm done for that moment in terms of whatever work I need to do for me. So, she believed she could, so she did. I believe I can, so I do. It was weak. So, Another whole brain posture. Then when I got to the end of that one, there's another statement to balance to benefit me at this time. No. So those four, expansive consciousness dissolves obstacles. I believe, embrace the process, release the outcome. She believed she could, so she did. That was my process for this morning. So I want to pitch to you. What's your process? What do you do when... You wake up in the morning and you're in a fuck it kind of mood. What do you do? Do you just suck it up and trudge along through the whole day? Or do you have a process that you use to help you shift, to clear out the junk, to clear out the junk? Okay, things are occurring in divine right timing and divine right order. I'm so happy and grateful that what's meant for me is on my, its way. I am open to receiving, blah, blah, blah. On we go, right? So... I started making a list of the things that came to me, came through me, that I need to do right now for me. More water. Track my food. I haven't been eating well. I'm so busy trying to accommodate what will my dad will eat. I'm not making what I will eat. I'm glad this is timely. I figured this is going to be helpful to everybody, right? If I'm working, struggling my way through this crap, Many other people are also. So, no sugar. I got to get be done with the sugar. It is not fixing the problem. Good morning, CJ. Glad you are here. It is, it is trying to mask. It's trying to soothe. It's trying, but at what cost? At what cost? I am going to do 10 days of breath work. I need 10 days of breath work. When I learned breath work many years ago, we oftentimes did these 30 days of breath work things. I don't feel like I need 30 days. I feel like I need 10. So I will honor that. I need to continue with my regular morning routine, which is after I'm done talking to y'all every day, I make my cacao. I drink some water. I journal. I journal, journal, journal. There were other things that were in my morning routine. In fact, I've got it all written down. Some have kind of gone by the wayside. Some may need to come back online now, but the journaling has been consistent and the breathing has been consistent. And um, yeah, so back to the book, back to the book. How many of you have read this book already? If you haven't, it is an amazing book. The gist, 
It's three storylines kind of coming together. The first storyline is a man named Dor, who lived in ancient times. And he was the first person who began to mark time. He found ways to measure the sun. He found ways to measure the moon. He was marking time. And he got so enamored with marking time, he stopped living life. Blink, blink, mic drop. Good, I'm glad you put it on hold. That's It, it is life-altering if you allow it to be. Good morning, Sue. Glad you're here. I think you're going to have to go back, Sue, and... Uh, Listen to the whole thing, because uh, it's probably going to color where I'm at on Tuesday. So, Dor starts marking time, starts not living life. What do we do now? We're on devices all the time. And at the end of the book, there's a segment where the second storyline person, a man named Victor, well, let me tell you a little bit about Victor. Richer than hell. More money than you can shake a stick at. He has cancer. He decides he's going to be cryogenically frozen. He decides that it's more important that he be cryogenically frozen while he's still alive than waiting until he dies. So he uses his money to make that happen. What he finds, the, uh, the timekeeper can manipulate time. So it's father time, if you want to think about it that way. His name is Dor. Um, shows him in the future. Good morning, Bobby. Glad you're here. What happens? He ends up being this, remember at the end of the Harry Potter movies when Voldemort is this, this, um, fetal looking thing that is is dying because of the the evil that he's perpetrated this guy that's the vision that came into my head he's in a tube a glass tube hooked up to all this shit he's in the future but humans really are no longer human they have no emotions so he has become kind of this sideshow attraction as one of the last humans who actually had emotions. And how they've hooked him up to this machinery allows these people to observe his memories so they can assume what emotions were like. The third person in the book that get, it gets woven in is a 17-year-old girl who gives her heart to this young man who rejects her and she attempts suicide. And so the whole book, the coming together of all of these stories is about what do we do with time? How have we gone from being like animals that just go through a lifespan to people who mark time, who complain they don't have enough time, who feel like they have too much time. Good morning, Rebecca. Glad you're here. How messed up we've gotten in terms of this time thing. And I'm going to add in how messed up we've gotten in terms of devices and what we allow to control our lives. When I go out to eat with friends, oftentimes I see families sitting together at a table. They've paid to go out to eat. They're not having any conversation with each other. Everybody's on their devices. What the hell is that? New normal. Yeah, I'm not participating. My kids used to um, be embarrassed when they had friends over for dinner and no devices at the table. No devices at the table. We're having conversation. All right. So the gist of the book is when we start marking time, when we start making um, non-interaction more important than living a life, connecting with people, being present, being real, being vulnerable, we're in a world of hurt. Good morning, Doug. And we are in a world of hurt. We are in a world of hurt. We need to be people again. We need to 
have neighbors again. We need them. <laughs> and I can't turn it off because I'll mess this up. Me and technology, right? Anywho, my call to action for all of us today. So I called my sister. That's why I was late this morning. I called my sister and I was crying. And I said, do you mind if we postpone doing this next section of the trail? I don't have it in me. And she said, good, because I don't have it in me either. She's struggling too. So today is a regrouping day. Today is a day to be still, to breathe, to connect with the world. I'm going to take myself for a walk. Maybe, maybe I'll rattle Diane's cage, see if she wants to go sit in the park for a while. I'll do my breath work. I'll make my cacao. I'll be present for those things, not rushing through them. Again, the Deepak Chopra quote, a park is a whole different experience when you stroll through it than when you speed past it in your car. All right? No more speeding past anything. Let's be present. Let's be fully present. You are very welcome, my dear. You are very welcome. And I want to pitch out there also because I know <laughs> you wear a mask. That's fine. Yeah, no cooties. Don't need any cute cooties. <laughs> Um, the, the bottom line is, are, are we willing to really live a life? It's painful at times. Some of this stuff is not fun at all. And then we have our escapes, right? But to fully be present, to show up, to really be. Family reunion. Frame it as an opportunity. Frame it as an opportunity. Sit there, observe, be the curious observer, talk to people. Who's truly present? Who's not? Who has stories they want to share? Listen to those. Who has the family history? They aren't going to be around forever. Pick their brain. Have a conversation. Did yard work and it boosted your spirit? Yes, 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 yes. Dig in the dirt. That helps. That grounds us. We need to be grounded. Okay, let's be a tree right at the moment. Put your feet down. Imagine the roots going down into Mother Earth. Let's breathe. Inhale. Exhale those roots down. <sighs> Connected to Mother Earth. Feel the energy exchange between you and Mother Earth. And now breathe up. Those branches of the trees that reach into the sky, that connect with the cosmos. Questions, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Ask those oldest people. The thing we plan on doing Monday, Joniel and I. What we're hoping, part of what we're hoping is that younger people who have a... So I'm just going to share. My sister and my son had a phone conversation yesterday and it didn't go well. He's so angry about what's going on in our world and how inhumane we are to humans, to Mother Earth, to animals, to whatever. That he ended up hanging up on her. He was that upset. And she was upset. And they love each other. And they've been beautiful people in each other's lives. But it blew apart yesterday. Is it going to stay blown apart? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But how painful that was, that their pain was so great, they couldn't stay connected in the moment. So, I'm calling us all to slow down, take some breaths, focus on what's most important, like getting ready for a family reunion. Are you going to get all wound up in what you're taking and what you're wearing and how you're going to get there on time and all that crap? Or are you going to spend the time thinking about who do I want to talk to? Who do I have questions for? Whose eyes do I want to look in and really be present for? We're having a wake-up call. We're having a huge wake-up call. Heed the call. Have an awesome Saturday. I will see you again tomorrow. Remember, you're capable of far more than you think you are. Bye-bye.